Greetings, real-time visual effects students. This is your uh, instructor, Chris Rota, here to tell you about the second part in our cloth simulation demonstration that I did not record on our lecture on Tuesday. Um, now, I said I was going to go into the complicated, uh, full-blown vertex cache simulation cloth simulation but I kind of lied my schedule kind of changed a little bit instead I'm going to go right into and showing off on the character deformation now the character in mind is this uh, vampire chick that I picked up on the web uh, she was for free and she seemed to be okay and she seemed to be two layers I've got a mannequin I've got a mannequin layer here and I've got a dress layer so here's the mannequin oh she's naked but there's the uh, dress, and I thought it would be pretty cool if we could get some of the, these frilly parts uh, and the center part of her uh, dress and these under parts of her arms kind of floating around and moving in uh, in kind of a more cloth-like fashion in a simulation instead of uh, actually just keeping them stiff along with the body. And so I decided to create a little demonstration on how we would pull that off on a TV4. And contrary to all of our other examples that we're doing for the cloth simulation this has nothing to do with houdini and so you could once again do this in any character that you want whether that be in maya max uh, blender houdini what you need at all it doesn't really matter all you got to do is be able to output this character into an fbx so what i have here is a simple animation character as you can see here i've got a simple character it's just she's got two uh um, it, she's got two objects uh well, actually, all I have here is the mannequin and the dress, and uh, we've got a simple uh, skeleton over there. I've gone ahead and gotten rid of all of the animation controls, so we just have the, uh, the vampire chick. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these elements. Come on over here to Maya where it says uh, Send to Unreal. I'm going to go with the selection. And then I'm going to go where my export is. Oh, yeah. The, by the way, this export and this uh, Maya scene file is located uh, in the Houdini uh, data that uh, hopefully you may have downloaded uh, for this class. Uh, it's called clothsimulation.rar. And in there is a little folder there that says from Maya. And that's where all this is stored. And so let me get right to the... Uh, the part of where this is exported. Okay, coursework. Uh, uh, this is a lecture. I've got, uh, and so this lecture, I'm actually going to be exporting into Houdini and my class simulation project, and then from Maya, and we'll make sure I've got the Vampire FBX. And so that's where I'm going to go. And since I've already exported, I'm not going to export it again. But if I did, I would go ahead and select cancel or select my project which is from the from Maya select and then I could choose vampire FBX and then I could export the selection now you're going to export this you're just going to export it as a standard skeleton mesh you're going to turn the smoothing groups the tangents and the binaurals and the reference to asset cache that's what you would end up with you're not going to be animating any kind of uh, animate you're not going to be using any kind of animation and so all we want is really just the mesh and the joints that's all we really want okay with that exported we can now then go right into UE4 and try to bring it in so I'm going to go ahead and create a new simulation and I'm going to call this this new folder I'm going to call this um, oh let's call it uh, character sim for for the simulation uh, inside of the data that you may have downloaded the UE4 project it might be just as vampire and that is uh, that will that is what uh, I'll be going from. That well, you could it'll be there for you when you want to choose it. But I, in the meantime, I'm gonna for this demonstration, I'm gonna use Character Sim. I'm gonna go into that. I'm gonna right click into there and go to Import into Character Sim. And so therefore, I'm gonna look into my uh, my stuff here. So I'm gonna go look into the lectures, Houdini cloth simulation. But I'm gonna want to go to the from Maya folder, and there's my Vampire.fbx. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And for this, make sure that the skeleton 
is none because we're going to choose skeletal mesh and that's going to expose that and make sure the import mesh is also selected so don't choose a skeleton and basically leave everything else as default include uh, creating the new materials uh, we got a couple of materials on there I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna try to clean them up a little bit but uh, I'm gonna do that in just a moment I'm gonna hit the import all and am I gonna get a warning no no warnings all right very cool I'm gonna let those uh, shaders compile and all right let's see here let's take a look at the 07 default I believe that is her skin shader and so what color is her skin it's kind of like in kind of pink or kind of uh, peachy well let's make it look kind of creepy and move that over into the green kind of give her kind of a uh, lovey monster look is anyone remember the show the monsters uh from the 60s uh and 70s uh, that might be before your time in fact it might be your parents time but i guess i'm kind of dating myself but anyway uh evelyn munster was green in the show and they actually even though it was black and white they painted her up in green <clears throat> it's got the green hue of the skin here and for a constant i want to put in some roughness here to make her skin looks a little less smooth so we've got some roughness and I'm gonna put a value of about 0.9 give it a little more of a chalky experience so it's not as plasticky okay what is that going gonna give us a yeah that's good enough for now I'm gonna go ahead and hit save all right I'm gonna wait till this finishes okay good I've got my skin tone and now let's go for the dress color now the dress color what do we want I chose a, a kind of reddish kind of orange color let's go with that again that actually kind of worked in the and that might provide a suitable and horrifically ugly contrast against the green skin so I'm gonna choose go over into this area where we get some orange here and we're gonna pump that up so we're gonna have some vibrant orange here so she's got an orange dress and it also is uh, going to be kind of rough we don't want it to be very smooth or plasticky so I'm going to go ahead and add a constant here put that in the roughness put the value of about point uh, 0.75 let's go for that all right we've got a good basic dress color here I'm gonna go ahead and save that all right we should have a good character now and we here we go I'm gonna go into my vampire character and there she is in her splendid glory all right so our mesh is looking pretty good you know the skin could be a little greener but you know she's definitely not looking too healthy and I think that's what we want but I'm just gonna go ahead and save that for giggles now I'm gonna go to the skeleton now I'm gonna make some modifications to the skeleton um, I know that she animates pretty well because if I go to the skeleton tree and I move her uh, left clavicle around it moves now nah, the skinning is not great it's not wonderful uh, go to the left leg yeah good enough cool for cats uh, good enough to good for demonstrational purposes uh, if you're creating this for your final model in the game you don't want to spend a little bit more than a few moments of time that I'm putting on to this but I want this character to receive some animation so that we can test some animation and see what the character can really do so I'm gonna go into the retarget manager and I'm gonna register this character for retargeting now retargeting is a process uh, we haven't definitely gone inside of the visual effects well, uh, if you want to know more about retargeting, get in contact with me, but and I'll show you all the details. But what I'm doing is I'm registering this character's all their her joints, so that they can form with uh, the animation retargeting system. And uh, we have to make sure that we get all the joint names corresponding to the sources, so that they uh, can identify and move stuff around and a lot of times the spelling actually makes a lot of the difference and so here we go just a couple more joints the thigh right is my upper leg my calf is my lower leg 
And here's the right side. Oops. Thigh right. There. And the lower leg. Okay. Now, since I'm retargeting the character, he actually has to be inside of the T pose. And she is currently in the A pose. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab her arms and I'm going to put her into a suitable T pose so that she is ready to be retargeted with an animation from another character. Okay, we got that going around here. It doesn't need to be uh, exact, and for this demonstrational purposes, it's good enough. But we've got the retarget manager, so I'm going to go ahead and register that with that. So modify pose, use the current pose. Okay, and I'm going to go hide pose, and yep, back and forth. There she is. So that is good to go now. Okay, we've saved our skeleton. We've saved our mesh. And the only thing we have to do now is save the physics. Now, when we open up this character, she looks like the Michelin Man. She is all decked out, and she is puffy. And so what we have to do now is go through and then scale and then reposition these poofy things, which are the collision volumes that come along with the character, in order to conform with the rest of her body. So I'm just going to move these around and do my best really quick to scale these things down so that they won't be, uh, yeah, they won't cause problems. Now, I don't want uh, the scaling to happen too much. I don't want it to be too much collision to be happening in the chest and so forth because I'm not really too concerned about the chest. I am more concerned about uh, where her uh, dress in her arms and her legs is going. So that's going to be my primary focus. But before I get these going, I have to kind of take care of these other issues before moving on to the more juicy stuff. And so really what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like moving these collision volumes so they're kind of out of the way. <clears throat> now here, let's go ahead and scale this so that it approximately fits where her natural arm would be. This would be her mannequin arm and not necessarily where the dress arm would be. So I want this to go inside here and be kind of quiet and subtle and move this in here so that it fits and aligns more of where the uh, actual bone is. And I still want to make it just a wee bit smaller just to prevent any possible of unintentional interpenetration. All right, we've got the upper arm taken care of. Here is the lower arm. Now, for this simulation, believe it or not, I'm not going to worry too much about the collision in the arms because I, I'm going to let the joints that are naturally there do most of the deforming by themselves because I don't really want to simulate the cloth animating around the arms. I want to animate the cloth beneath the arms and the cloth that is under the arms, but I don't really want to animate the cloth that is touching the arms. So that's the reason why I'm not really focusing too much on getting the collision volumes on the arm exactly correct because that's not really where I want to focus on. I want to let the natural deformation of the joints do most of the work for me. I'm kind of lazy, and honestly, cloth simulations in general don't work ever as good as you expect them to. And the, the easier you can make it on the uh, simulation manager, the easier and the better looks your results are going to be. And so we're going to try to make this as simple as possible and hopefully go for as good of a look as we can possibly change. Okay, so we've got the arms in there. Let's go ahead and get the legs. I've got the thigh here. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. All right. I'm going to rotate that up just a wee bit and move that out just a tad. 
Okay, there's the upper leg. Now here's the lower leg. Let's go ahead and make it much smaller. All right, change its rotation to be more aligned with the lower leg bone. Let's go ahead and reposition it. All right, cool. Let's go get, since we're here, let's go ahead and get the other side. Like I said, we're not really looking for a close simulation. In my opinion, no claw solver ever does the job as well as you want it to. You always have to kind of take whatever you can get. And you're probably going to see why in a few minutes once we fire this thing up. If you can get something close to what you want, consider yourself doing really well when dealing with claw simulations. And that is exactly what we're going to try to strive for here. Uh, more sophisticated claw simulations can be done, but they're going to take you know, much longer to tweak and to fine tune. And for this demonstrational purpose for the visual effects class, this would be good enough. Like I said, for your character, you're going to want something that's going to be a little bit more robust and spend a little bit more time on. Okay, we've adjusted our collision volumes to be kind of like inobtrusive, and so hopefully we will be ready to go ahead and paint our simulation in here. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. We've got the physics assets. Let's return back to the mesh, and we've got our chicky here. She's ready to go, and let's go ahead and now paint in her uh, dynamic cards. All right, so I clicked onto that, and I'm going to right-click and go create the clothing slim for data. I've got the vampire asset. Let's go ahead and create. I'm going to go ahead and select that, click that, go right-click, and go apply clothing data. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select that. All right, so we've got our, our, our object, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on my cloth paint. And this is going to take uh, UE4 a little while to kind of uh, uh, to kind of process. Come on, let's get going. Yep, it's hung. Hopefully, it's not crashed because I didn't say anything. Please <laughs> keep it going. Keep it going. Ah, there it is. All right, saving out of date packages. Okay, good. We've got our uh, we've got our mesh turned on. Now we can go ahead and start painting. Uh, oh, it turned off. Turn back on, I tell you. Thank you. Now for this, I don't want the vertices really animating that much. I want them animating a small amount. So I really want them just, just uh, so I don't want them animating a full 100 centimeters. So 30 to 40 centimeters is all right. So let's go ahead and split the difference with 35 centimeters. My paintbrush, uh, for, I'm going to paint with the uh, arms, so I'm going to leave the radius at 2, and I'll leave the fall off at 1, so we can get a much smaller kind of paintbrush and more focus on these smaller areas. So I'm going to paint, start painting in the bottom part of her dress arms, because this is the area that I want flopping around. A good enough coverage for this demonstration is all we need, but you're probably going to want to spend a little bit more time on this when working on your character for your game. So I've got the front side, and don't forget to get we can get the back sides. And UE4 colors the original mesh, kind of a pinkish red beforehand, and so what you want to do is keep on painting it until you get rid of all the color in the area that you want to be simulated. Notice that the top part is fully uh, is going to be fully driven by the joint mechanics, but the transparent part is what's going to be driven by the ver uh, going to be driven by the simulation. All right, so this is looking kind of very opaque still. All right, I'm just going to be painting underneath her arms. All right. Now I'm going to grab this side. So we've got the front, we've got the back. And 
And here we go. We've got the under part here. All right, let me make sure we've got this, the clean parts from the bottom. All right, so I'll click that going. Okay. All right, I think we have the uh, top and the bottom, the left and the right, the front and the back done a little bit. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and get UE4 to process this. I'm going to turn off the cloth paint to actually do and engage the simulation. Now we just have to wait while well, UE4 does its thing and we grow old. Okay, there you can see that the cloth relaxed. So let's turn on the active winds. So I'm going to turn, go to character, go to clothing, go to enable clothes sampling. That's what, uh, uh, and then we're going to turn on the wind strength and make this a one. And we see that it's animating around. Now I see that the uh, that it's moving very quickly. So I know I'm going to want to dampen this and slow it down because that it, it, it it's really behaving fast. So I'm going to try to just make the dampening instead of 0.4. I'm going to try to make it one. Yeah, that's a little bit better. It's still a little bit uh, oscillating, a little bit uh, uh, crazy-like, so I'm going to change the angular drag to maybe about 0.5 and see how that turns out. Yeah, it's still a little bit uh, spazoid, but I'm going to try to see how this looks with the overall character. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into the Activate the Cloth Paint and turn back in, and we're going to paint the bottom parts of her dress. And I like, I haven't tried this yet, but let's go on the outside fringe here and maybe paint just this little area to see what happens if we activate that as well. Just a little bit of an extra cloth sim there. Kind of like get it on the outside fringe. As you can see it's kind of like, you can see the mannequin leg kind of showing through. But I just want to try to get just this uh, little area in between. All right, get rid of that pink. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, well, my brush is still small, I'm going to get her other side as well. So I'm going to try to paint this outside. Come on. Every time I bring my brush up, UE4 wants to process my changes. So things can get a little bit slow. If you have a slow machine, oh, I'm sorry for you, but <laughs> you got to just kind of like hover in there and stick in there and work with the best that you can. This skirt is fairly high detailed and it's got a lot of uh, data on it. It's kind of actually, the skirt is actually kind of good for the simulation purposes. It's got a good distribution of vertex data so it handles the uh, deformation of the uh, gravity pretty well. All right, that looks terrible. Let's see if we can clean this up just a little bit. All right, clean up this area. Clean these, clean this pink up. And maybe just get this area. Okay, that see the, the the problem, the difficulty is is I don't know what the what's the front and what's the back. All I just see is pink. Okay, so we're just seeing the other side through. Say this is the just the other side. So I think everything is good. So let's go ahead and paint the uh, middle part. And in doing so, I'm gonna increase my paintbrush size to five. And that should facilitate for a little faster painting. So basically what I do is just want to paint 
right in between where the mannequin's legs are. So I just have the material in the middle. Okay, I've got the paint in the middle. All right, now let's get the other side and get her backside and just paint in the middle. Once again, this is not the world's greatest job. I'm just kind of doing this kind of on the fly for demonstrational purposes. And if this is too much, then uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. So this is kind of like the, the simulation is like kind of around her legs, but not actually on her legs. I want the joints actually doing the deformations on these parts. So I'm going to turn off the cloth painting and see what we got here. This might look totally terrible. I haven't tried this before. But, you know, life rewards the, uh, the prepared. Okay, well, let's see how this actually works. Let's go ahead and save this character. And let's go back to the, um, we've got our skeleton, our mesh, and our physics all saved. We're ready to drop this character into game here. Let's put their chicky right here. And I'm going to rotate her so that she is facing the camera here, facing us. So let's go get and put some animation on this girl. Let's teach her how to dance. So I'm going to go back to the go back to the content, and I've got some whole bunch of animos, animations here in the Mixamo Anim Pack. We go to Mixamo Anim Red. Go to Anims. All right, I'm going to give her the Samba dancing. So I'm going to right click on the Samba dance, retarget the animation asset to duplicate. And then I'm going to go for the character sim as my other character. I'm going to change my destination to be the character sim. Click OK. Then I'm going to retarget. Uh, and it says everything was retargeted. OK, there's our animation. So everything is kosher. Let's go ahead and make sure our character is animating. So for the animation mode of our character, I'm going to use an animation asset. And then I'm going to choose my Samba dance animation, and she falls on her face. So let's remedy that by going negative 90, and I believe she needs to be returned at 180. All right, so let's go ahead and play and see what we get. Okay. Come on, let's go here. All right, there we go. Let's take a look at her. All right. Like I say, I'm getting a lot of tearing along the back side of her leg and on her butt. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can kind of like clean these up a little bit. And there's a little bit of tearing going on in the arm. So I'm going to get rid of the, uh, I'm going to get rid of some of that painting that I put on the side of the leg and keep going on the stuff in the middle. So explorations in character animation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back into my active cloth paint and I'm going to undo the painting that I did on the back side here. So where it says the paint value of 35, I'm going to decrease that to be zero in order because I don't want anything to be animated here. So I'm going to paint this as zero. So I'm going to get this whole side. That mean, I mean, we want no animation change whatsoever. And so really all I'm going to be doing is just kind of covering up what I painted out earlier. All right, we've got the left side. So let's go ahead and do the right side now. Okay, we've got this area. Clean this up.
I think since I'm painting zero weight on there, uh, the pink is reclaiming that area. That's the first time that I've seen that happen, but that's actually very interesting. Okay, good to know. And what I'm going to do is increase the amount of uh, animation that I've got in between her legs because I thought that that was looking kind of clunky kind of in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I want to make change this back to, what was it, uh, 35? Yeah, so I want to make sure that this is now painted in between so the, uh, the fabric in between her legs gets animated appropriately. And we've got the front side there. Okay, so let's go for the back side. Kind of give it a little bit more of a dynamic bounce. I'm not sure why it's uh, showing up so dark. And there, that looks about right. That looks about right. Okay, cool. Now, <clears throat> I also noticed that her arms and her legs were kind of deformed and kind of like moving around and not looking real good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an extra layer in here. And this is a mask that's going to stick in just where the animation is. So I'm going to click on here to the new mask and add a new mask. I'm going to click that and click turn it on. And I'm going to double click the name to actually change its name. And I'm going to call this Anim. All right, so I'm going to right click on this and set the target. I want this to be an Anim Drive multiplier. And so what this is going to be is it's going to be a it's going to stick hard to the regular animation. So and for the paint value there, I'm going to stick this back to 100. And so I'm going to just paint her the top part of her arms, and I'm going to see if I can paint her chest so that it sticks harder to the uh, it sticks harder to the actual joint animation. It doesn't it doesn't move around so much. So I've got this area here, the top of her arms. I don't know if this is actually going to have an impact, but we'll give it a try. Going to click on here, paint on these sections. And let me tighten this up just a little bit more. So we want this area just to be tight. Let's get, uh, we've got her left side, so let's get her right side. So this is the right part of her arm. All right, so we've got the back side. Now let's get the front. And I'm going to try something new uh, just to make sure that I want all of her dress to stick exactly to her chest and so forth. So I'm just going to paint her bodice right here um, <clears throat> and make sure that that sticks to the animation. So I'm going to crank that radius up to 5. And I'm going to make sure that this area around her dress sticks exactly to her body and does not animate anything other than what her uh, other than where she's going I haven't tried this yet but let's give it a shot and while we're at it let's make sure that uh, her buns are animating according to her deformation I don't want those to be simulated we're not working jiggly here this is a still a family related character here, right? It's not an X-rated character. So let's keep the let's keep it fun and fresh for the family. 
And let's get this part right here. All right. So I've identified the areas that I want to be animated and the areas I don't want to be animated. I'm going to turn on, I deactivate the cloth, reactivate it. Come on, turn off. There it goes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. Save, please. All right, cool. Now let's check what our let's see what our chicky looks like once we see it in playing in the context of the game. All right, make it a little bit eleven. Okay, so it looks like uh, the billowiness in between her legs is still a little bit dramatic, and it's still like her legs are kind of like sticking through, and there's some getting interpenetration. I need to do some weighting on her chest and so forth. It looks like this character still needs a couple hours worth of prep in order to make Turley look good, but we are getting some kind of simulation. I think if we were to make the if we were to relax the simulation to be a little bit slower, maybe take off some of the dampening, some of the regular, um, the angular, uh, <clears throat> uh, the angular uh, stiffness, then it should move a little bit better. But it's good enough to the, so this is a good demonstration of showing you where this could go. This character is still going to need a couple more hours of tweaking to more, to make look professional, but we're definitely on our way. So this is, wraps up our animated character simulation for uh, the cloth. And uh, hopefully it gets you on your way to at least implant the idea of where this could go. And with a little bit of extra time and attention, you can make it really make this look something. Okay, I will see you for the third part of our video series when we're going to go through a cloth simulation inside of a thorough cloth. And then we're going to use vertex cache animation in order to bring it into UE4. I'll see you in the next video.